So I know how unpopular it is to be seen as helping banks right now, especially when everyone is suffering in part from their bad decisions. I promise you, I get it. Up until about the Kennedy assassination and the beginning of the war in Vietnam, the United States is a very powerful engine for world progress. It's the assassinations, the Kennedy assassination, and the others in the 1960s, the beginning of the Vietnam War, and the beginning of the absolute domination of the Wall Street group over every other interest. Nobody else counts except the Wall Street money masters. That has now made the United States into uh, no longer a force for progress, but something very different, often a force for destruction in the world. The military-industrial complex has taken over the country along with the Wall Street gang. If you look also at the people that Obama has put on his appointments list, it's all Wall Street. It's government of Wall Street, by Wall Street, and for Wall Street. There's nobody from heavy industry. There's nobody from the auto sector. Nobody from Silicon Valley. Nobody from big oil. Nobody from defense. No labor, no women, no retirees, no small business, nothing. It's pure Wall Street. The only people who have a voice in Obama's councils are Wall Street finance oligarchs. That's all there is. Nobody else counts for anything under Obama. It's the most extreme Wall Street administration we've ever had. Before his death, President Woodrow Wilson apologized to the public, regretting that he had been deceived by a group of international bankers and the country's financial system had fallen into their iron grip via the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Whether sought or unsought by the military-industrial complex, the potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Dwight D. Eisenhower, he warned the people that the military-industrial complex was taking over the country. Only three years after leaving office, President Eisenhower's prophetic warning concerning the threat posed to our system of government by the military-industrial complex came to pass. President John F. Kennedy had enraged the entire elite network now, Kennedy was brought in as somebody who was expected to be a puppet. It was thought that his pro-Nazi father, Joseph P. Kennedy, the bootlegger, the speculator, would uh, guarantee that Kennedy would be obedient to the establishment. They thought that Kennedy was a sex maniac who could be manipulated through all of this. But it turned out that through his personal suffering, Kennedy had discovered a personal sense of himself, which went beyond just being a puppet. And he began to think about things like economic recovery, world peace, having a space program, uh, making deals with uh, the Soviets, cutting the uh, Federal Reserve down to size, and a whole series of other things. Executive Order Number 11110, signed by President Kennedy, began the process of abolishing the private Federal Reserve. Kennedy was also pushing for real civil rights reform and had begun the process of pulling the troops out of Vietnam. The last time you had an actual president was uh, Kennedy. The oligarchs took swift and decisive action. When John Kennedy attempted to take the government back from the robber barons, he was brutally murdered. The message to future U.S. presidents and leaders across the world was clear. Do as you're told or die. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was the last true president of the United States. And until the globalists are removed from power, we will never have another real one. The other thing about the American presidency, you've got to remember, is that this is a puppet post. It's automatically going to be a puppet post. The idea that Obama is somebody who is going to come in and exercise real authority, when he's obviously been chosen and given everything that he's got by these financiers. Presidents are now little more than corporate pitch men who take all the political heat while the controllers remain in the shadows safe from public scrutiny. Hip-hop icon KRS-One is not just known for selling millions of albums. He has led a tireless crusade against youth violence and has been a strong voice for human rights. If they controlled it before, what are you, why don't, what makes you think they're not controlling it now? The country was on a verge of revolution. They threw a black man up. Now we like this. They give him the money, they give him the bundling, they give him vote fraud, they give him the media whores, they give him goons, they even have elected officials making threats to put people in jail if they criticize Obama in public. All of this is the mark of a puppet, 
uh, and that means that he is a, a puppet, actually more of a puppet than anybody else, more of a puppet than Mrs. Clinton would have been, even more of a puppet than, than McCain. He's the maximum puppet that we've had, certainly since, since Jimmy Carter. They put a black face on the New World Order, and now we all happy. KRS ain't buying it. In the real executive power structure, the president serves the military-industrial complex, itself owned by the international bankers. If there's a revolution, the population just throws out the prime minister or president. The elite stays in power because the public is never aware of who the real enemy is. In Evian, France in 1991, standing before the Bilderberg Group, the apex of the world government power structure, David Rockefeller defined the New World Order as a system of world government serving the international banking elite. For decades, the banker-owned media would attack anyone who dared to warn the public that a dictatorial world government was being constructed right under their nose, and that national sovereignty was being deliberately destroyed. And now, after years of denial, the media and the elite themselves are proudly announcing that not only is world government real, but it is the answer to the financial crisis that they carefully engineered. Suddenly, the Wall Street Journal tells us that the North American Union is here and that getting rid of the dollar for a common currency with Canada and Mexico is good. The Financial Times of London, published by a member of the Bilderberg Group, crowed that a dictatorial world government had been kept in the shadows for our own good and that it was now time for it to emerge from behind the curtains of national security. White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel stated on record that they can't let this crisis go to waste. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. And Henry Kissinger, who gave Barack Obama his first job out of college, told national television that the economic collapse was a great opportunity to bring in the New World Order. He went on to say that Barack Obama was the perfect person to sell it to the world. Uh, but he can give a new impetus to American foreign policy, partly because the reception of him is so extraordinary around the world. I think his task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period, when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't such a crisis. In June of 2006, our team traveled to Ottawa, Canada to gather intelligence on the shadow government's agenda for the coming years. I think that's the queen. Investigative journalist and best-selling author Daniel Estelin had been tracking the Bilderberg Group for more than 16 years. His moles inside Bilderberg informed him that the elite were planning to first run the price of gas up to $150 a barrel, unimaginable in 2006. He also reported that after suckering the middle class back into the stock market, the group was going to implode the subprime mortgage market and destroy public confidence. Well, one of the things that you know we're getting from this morning in this afternoon's conference, this morning conference was about the. Uh, the, the energy crisis, the price of oil, this, the afternoon conference, which started about 4 o'clock, 4, 4.30, they were talking about, uh, one of the American delegates, I, I wasn't told who exactly it was, was talking about the, uh, <clears throat> the concern that the American citizens have had with the, with, you know, with the housing prices going down, so they're not investing that money. So what they needed to do is they needed to create the illusion that everything is going well. So what they're going to do over the next year, year and a half, is to bring the market back up to 1998, 1999 levels, they got to get all the suckers to invest whatever little money they have left over. <clears throat> and that's when they're going to make the economy bottom drop out. They need to destroy the economy because as we're running out of oil, when people don't travel, at least that's what they're saying, when people don't travel, when people don't have money, they don't travel, they don't spend any money, which means you don't waste a lot of uh, 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 oil and natural gas. That's the afternoon so conversation. So how does the source, I mean, just ballpark, I mean... So, so you have the sources of... Well, actually, there are two people uh, who are members of the Bilderberg Club. It's actual members. They're members of, they're members of the Bilderberg Club who, for years and years and years, have been going and participating in all the conversations. They've always been dead on, always. And last year, they said the oil prices are going to go up to 150. At the time, it was 39. It went up to 76, yeah. basically doubled. If it doubles again, it's going to be back to where these people... They attack Iran and will...